performance and today I want to walk you through the process of custom tuning your C8 or Global B vehicle using Delta Control module. So for example in this particular case we are remote tuning a C8 with a twin turbo kit and it's also fitted with our direct port methanol injection system as well as our Delta Control module and clutch pressure controller. This particular vehicle, this customer is running on about six pounds of boost right now, and we are just trying to get it dialed in uh, before we start adding more boost and adding the methanol into the equation. So right now we're just on gate pressure and doing basic tuning, getting the car dialed in on its base setup. So he just sent me a new log. So I'm going to open up Delta Control module software, which is right here. And if you are actually emailing or modifying an emailed file, you're gonna go right here to demo slash cal editor you're going to select the firmware that that particular vehicle is on. This vehicle is using the IAT V1.10 Plus firmware on their Delta Control module. So we're going to select that firmware and then we're going to put it in demo mode. And that's going to take us over here to the settings tab. Now we're going to select open cal file and it's going to be under downloads and it's going to be under right here. So take six is the latest cal file. So I just open up that cal file and now you have some data here which is going to be basically in hex and just showing okay we haven't modified anything yet and once we make modifications you'll see changes start to populate right here or things will be highlighted in the data so it's going to be pretty cool now let's look at the different types of log files that we're going to be reviewing to figure out what we need to do to adjust the car and make it run better and as good as it possibly can so with your typical setup, you're going to have the Cortex Boost Controller, which is going to give you a .CDL4. Uh, you're also going to have the actual log data from the Delta Control module, which right here is labeled Watt 9. We're going to be using Mega Log Viewer to look at that data. And then we also have HP Tuners, which this is labeled Watt 9 as well. And you can see here, this is a .HPL file that we will use. So pulling up HP Tuners, you can see what we have going on here. So they started the log a little late, but uh, that's okay. You can still see how we're going to modify this. So we know we're at full throttle already. We're at about 15 degrees of timing, 18 degrees of timing, excuse me, 0.83 Lambda. And the fuel trims are about negative 10, negative 11%, basically all the way through until the very end and when he hits about 6,100 RPM. So also, I have also uh, reduced the timing by essentially reducing the outputted voltage to the ECU on the IAT data line. Um, that allows us to keep the timing a little more conservative, especially when we're trying to dial in the vehicle. So let's look at the lot, or excuse me, the cal file. Uh, let's open up our timing tab. As you can see here, this is the mass airflow frequency range from 3000 to 800 Hertz. Lower the Hertz, higher the airflow. Right now, we are reporting a lower voltage once you get to the wide open throttle range. We do that intentionally to keep it a little safer so we can keep timing at bay until we know that our fueling is dialed in and ready to go. How do I know where I'm at at wide open throttle mass airflow frequency wise? Well, glad you asked. The customer would have taken the data using a live data screen, started logging, stopping logging, then export to .csv. That .csv we can now open in Mega Log Viewer. So, this is that .csv which that customer uh, saved and sent to us. Now we're reviewing this data. You can see here we have IT in, IT out, voltage, accelerator pellet position, and intake air temperature percentage. So this is the percentage in which we're adjusting the IT outputted by, which thereby gives us more or less timing depending on how we modify that signal. Uh, we also have our mass airflow frequency in and mass airflow frequency out. Those values are gonna be different depending on what the fuel trims are and how we adjust it. So again, the lower the mass airflow frequency that we output to the ECU, the more airflow the ECU thinks it's seen, which is actually telling the truth to the ECU because you know, once you make adjustments like turbos or anything to the intake track or supercharger, your mass airflow calibration is going to be altered by that. And you need to tell the, the truth or tell the ECU, hey, I now have this amount of frequency coming across the MAF and therefore this amount of airflow coming across the MAF. So that's what we're using the Delta Control module to allow us to do. End user programmability is key. 
and we can adjust to varying uh, modifications made to your vehicle using our software and our tuning hardware. All right, so widened throttle began right at about uh, 1600 hertz. All right, so we know from roughly 15, 1600 hertz all the way to 1067 mass airflow in, that's our wide open throttle tuning window. So if we go back to our HP tuners log, we can see all the way through wide open throttle, we we're pulling about 12% fuel, anywhere from 10 to 12% fuel. So that means we need to report 10 to 12% less airflow to the ECU. All right, so that's where we go back to the Delta Control module and we go to our math cal table and we know our wide open throttle range is basically from 1400 as far as how our cells we have available here are 1400 to say 800 hertz so again we need to report about 10 percent less airflow coming in so you would think oh i need to make these numbers smaller well if you make them smaller you're actually reporting more airflow because the uh lower the air, the reported airflow lower the number the higher the airflow you're telling it's got coming in so if you report a lower frequency or a higher airflow it's actually going to give it more fuel so if you gave it more fuel your fuel trims would be negative 20 percent if you went the wrong way the next way around so we need to remember we need to report a higher frequency or less airflow higher frequency reported equals less airflow reported so this means we need to increase these numbers by roughly five to ten percent to make the adjustment we need and make it work the way it should so typically i don't go the full ten percent because it seems to be a very fine line that you'll cross if you go too aggressive with your adjustments so i'm going to go by five percent so we're going to go highlight our range for wide open throttle which is from 1400 to 800 hertz we're going to, go to our table editor here and we're going to multiply this by 1.05 and that's going to get us at 101. Um, so that should be pretty close to what we want to be uh, for wide open throttle. So basically, this is now reporting, scaling the output of frequency by 5%, increasing that frequency value, which therefore is going to reduce the amount of reported airflow. So that should make our fuel trims pretty much close to 0% on the next run that the customer makes. All right, so this right here is 100, so it might need to be 101 across the board there. So you can highlight that, make that all 101. Now I know it's easy to get confused. Sometimes I wanna uh, say the wrong thing myself, but the higher the frequency, the lower the airflow. The lower the frequency, the higher the airflow. So we are modifying this signal appropriately based off of those facts. So if we make this number higher, we're reporting a higher frequency. Higher frequency means less airflow. It takes a little bit to wrap your head around it, but it's the best way in which we can have to adjust this mass airflow frequency value. All right, now, if we want to adjust timing, we would go here, and again, it's the same scale. Now we know our wide open throttle window is from roughly 1400 hertz to 800 hertz. We, if we want to add more timing, we're going to report a higher number here. So our multiplier, Basically, 100% is zero modification. Now, from 1600 to 800, we start adjusting the outputted IET voltage. If you lower the voltage, that's going to give you a higher temperature right here in this chart. You can see that. So the lower the voltage, the higher the temperature. So the higher the temperature, the less timing. So this is pretty easy to remember. If you want less timing, make these numbers smaller. If you want more timing, make these numbers larger. That's basically what you need to remember. So we had pretty pretty low timing, uh, but you gotta remember when you start reporting less airflow to the ECU, you're gonna get more timing based off that because the ECU is going to calculate more cylinder air mass uh, or less cylinder air mass, so it's gonna give you more timing because the less cylinder fill you have, the more timing you need to make ideal combustion, right? So um, just remember that. So we adjusted this already, so we're already reporting less airflow so the ECU is going to say, okay, we have less cylinder fill, so we need to give you more timing. That being said, I know we could probably get away with more timing nonetheless. So we're going to go back to our timing tab, and we're going to increase the timing by roughly 5%. So that's going to get us right back to basically 100% and no 
ignition adjustment or no IIT adjustment, which should get us uh, right where we want to be for now. And if you want to add timing, you can go above 100 as well. So it just really depends on your particular vehicle and how hot it's getting, et cetera, et cetera. We can still also shut, we can still adjust our minimum IIT and maximum IIT, which it will make this adjustment you have here. To make it simpler, I'm going to make this all 100%. That updated the cal file for the timing file, or timing table, excuse me. So let's say, all right, well, if your car is going to get really hot, uh, we don't want to adjust our IIT if our actual IIT in goes above, say, 140, which we have right here right now. Now, we can say, all right, anything above 150 degrees, I don't want you to adjust the timing at all. Just use one-to-one, -one, so whatever the ECU is actually seen, or whatever the DCM is seen for IIT is what we're going to report to the ECU. So you're not going to get any timing modification based off IIT at that point. So right now I have a window set, anything below 90 degrees, no modification to timing, anything above 140 degrees, no modification to timing. So I write that IIT limit and we're back at 100%. So whatever timing it thinks it needs to give it, it's going to give it uh, the whole time here. So we have no timing adjustment for this next adjustment for the customer. And now we're back where we kind of needed to be. And so that's timing, that's fuel. TCM, uh, what this basically is, if the end user uses the paddle, we can set our ignition cut duration, which we have not done yet. It's just as default value. So we're gonna set our ignition cut duration to 150 milliseconds. So we're gonna write that. Now, this is the frequency value uh, below which the ignition cut will be active. So again, our wide open throttle range was roughly from 1500 to 800 hertz. So this means if the customer uses the paddle below, or excuse me, above 1500 hertz, say 2000 hertz, which is gonna be part throttle, the ignition cut's not gonna be active. If the customer goes below 1500 hertz, i.e. wide open throttle, then the ignition cut will be active once it sees that you're pulling the paddle the upshift paddle. So we can also write that to be sure that that's already written. And you can see all this data right here in the live data logger, which I don't, I'm not connect to a car right now, so I can't show you right now, but that's how that would work. Um, and then other than that, you've got a test function here for uh, the 12 volt output, which we typically use for methanol. So if you wanna make sure your methanol pump is working, you can test that and you'll see that it's working. It will bog the car down a little bit if it's spraying appropriately. Um, so that's a little bit more about the Delta Control module and the things we can offer you. The end user adjustability is very, very good and easy to use. And once you understand those basic principles, again, higher frequency is lower airflow. Lower frequency is higher airflow. So we need to report the news, report accurate news to the ECU. Uh, timing, again, same way, but instead, if you want a higher timing value, make this number higher. If you want lower time value, make this number lower. And 12 volt output, we can talk more later, but this is our PWM adjustment we can use for the 12 volt output and TCM tuning, live data, testing, and so on. So we really look forward to hearing from you guys and your feedback. We're always trying to improve the software and the hardware, make more features, but ultimately we want you guys, the end user or the shop, to be able to use this product and dial in your customer's vehicle or your vehicle to make it run as good as it possibly can. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our team here at Pites Performance. Also, check us out on Instagram, at Pites Performance, and also Facebook, of course. So, until further on, guys, stay tuned.